Hello video creators, welcome to StoryShim. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this awesome sketch or drawing transition. This could be a great way to introduce a character or maybe as an opener of the video. If you want to create this transition, you need a top-down photo that includes some white paper, like a notebook for example, and you need the video clip that you want to use to transition into. And finally, you need video editing software Premiere Pro. I found the two photos that I used in the examples on pixabay.com. They are free, so if you want to practice along with the tutorial, you can find the download links in the video description. And of course, you can use any video clip, but the one that I'm using is coming from the sponsor of this video, Artlist. Artlist and Artgrid are one of my favorite sources for high quality stock videos, music tracks and sound effects. The quality of their assets is really impressive. You can use them anywhere, yes, anywhere, and after downloading, it's yours forever. So I can highly recommend you to give them a try, and if you use my affiliated link in the video description to sign up for one of their annual plans, you will receive two extra months for free. Ok, now it's time to move over to Premiere and start some editing. In Premiere, I've got this photo and video already on the timeline. I'm going to start by selecting the image or photo and then move over to the effect controls panel. Because this is a high resolution photo, I need to scale it down and then reposition it. Ok, perfect. Now we can move over to the video and then select a frame that we want to use for the transition. And I think that this one will work. Next I'm going to switch over to the razor tool by hitting the C key and then cut the track. And after that I'll move back to the selection tool by hitting the V key. In the next step we're going to freeze this first cutoff part of the clip. Now make sure that the playhead is still between the two parts, then right click on the first part and then select frame hold options. Then select hold on source timecode, which is the point of the playhead, and then click OK. Now the first part of the video is frozen until the cut, after that it will continue on playback. Next I'm going to take the first part and then place this on top of the photo and extend duration. Then with the same part selected move over to the effect controls panel and then scale it down. Then I'll rotate this one to minus 90 degrees. And then to be able to see where to position this one I'm going to lower the opacity by a few percentage. And now because it's a little transparent I'm able to reposition this perfectly on top of the notebook. As you can see we've still got some parts left that do not cover the notebook. But we can fix this by adding a mask. Inside the effect controls panel click on this pen tool icon or free draw bezier tool and then draw a mask inside the program monitor. I'm going to zoom in, but we don't have to work super precise because we're going to add some mask feathering afterwards. With the pen tool enabled, you can left click in the program monitor to add mask points. And then you can finish or complete the mask by left clicking on the first point again. Ok, that's done, let's zoom out again and set opacity back to 100%. And as I mentioned, we're going to add some feather to cover up the rough edges. This is already starting to look great, and to improve this further we're going to add an effect. In the effects panel I'm going to search for the find edges effect. And then I'm going to apply this effect to the first cutoff part of the video clip. And as you can see, this effect instantly gives it a bit of a drawing look. But you can also see that the lighter parts of the image are way too bright, and that's why we're going to change the blend mode. It all depends on the footage itself, but if you use a white paper as a background, then you can choose multiply or darken as the blend mode. And as you can see, this now gets rid of the wider, brighter parts that we don't want. Most of the times this should be enough, but if you want to improve this further, you can move over to the Limitri color panel. In this case I would start by lowering the saturation to make it all black and white and also lower the highlights and shadows. And maybe also play around with some contrast. And that's it, this one is now looking like a drawing to me. In the next step I'm going to add a bit of text and I'm going to do this with the type tool which you can enable here. Simply left click in the program monitor and start typing, in this case I'll type do you remember. And then after typing I'll go back to the selection tool, then rotate and reposition the text. Inside the Essential Graphics panel I'm going to change the font and after that I will also change the color. I'll pick something from the drawing. Ok, this looks great. Let's move on to the next step where we're going to animate the rotation zoom. First I'll move the graphics layer to the right place and then we're going to nest this. Select all the layers and right click and select nest. 
Then give the nested sequence a name and click OK. Now we can select the nested sequence on the timeline and then move over to the effect controls panel. In there we're going to enable keyframes for precision, scale and rotation. And then I'll move the first set of keyframes to the beginning. And after that I'll go back to the timeline and move the nested sequence to the second track. And then move the second part of the video underneath that. Now we can lower the opacity for the nested sequence. This will make the video layer visible below the nested sequence. We can now use this to rotate, scale and reposition the nested sequence and match this with the video. Something like this should be close enough. We can now set the opacity back to 100% and then move the video to the end of the nested sequence. Then move over to the effect controls panel and select the last keyframes that we created. Move them to the end, right click on them and then select Ease In. Selecting Ease In will make the zoom animation a lot smoother. If I now scrub to the timeline, you can see the animation that is going on and you can also see some black parts here at the bottom. You could fix this by playing around with the timing of the position and the scale keyframes, something like this maybe. I can still see a small part here, so let's move this a bit further and this should be fixed. Ok, time to give this a playback and see what we've got so far. Next we're going to fix this rough cut between the two parts. First I'll move over to the project panel, click the new items icon and then select adjustment layer. You can accept the default settings and click OK. Now you can find the adjustment layer here in the project panel. I'm going to drag this over to the timeline and then place this on top of the two parts. I will move the playhead between the two clips and then head over to the effects panel. In there I'm going to search for the proc amp effect. I'm going to apply this to the adjustment layer, make sure it's selected and then head over to the effect controls panel. In there I'm going to enable keyframes for brightness and I'll move this first keyframe a couple of frames back. Then create another keyframe and move this keyframe a few frames forward. And now we can increase the brightness until the point where the rest of the image is barely visible. Something like this will do. And now with a couple of keyframes on the proc amp effect, we've just created this glowy flash transition between the two parts. Let's have a look at the end result. And that's it for this Premiere Pro tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please like the video, that really helps a lot. And also don't forget to check out Artlist and claim your 2 months extra on top of your annual subscription. And finally, thanks for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.